Welcome back to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, on the last episode, we got some jiggies. Specifically, we got them in Treasure Trove Cove and Mumbo's Mountain, the first two worlds. On this episode, we're going to go to Clanker's Cavern. Actually, we're going to take a pit stop real quick. Uh, so, one, I think this one doesn't go to Clanker's Cavern, but it does go to something a little extra. It doesn't really matter, and I'll probably never use it, but don't skirt right past that guy. It's another magic cauldron. Uh, okay, that's not the same color as the other one, thankfully, because that would be a really terrible shortcut. But, you know, someday we'll get a matching pair. Uh, so we've been, we've been making pretty good progress on the world so far. I mean, first episode, we got all the Jiggies in Mumbo's Mountain. Second episode, we got all the Jiggies in uh, Treasure Trove Cove. Almost forgot the name. I'm just going to be honest, that probably ends today. Uh, Clanker's Cavern is kind of a... I wouldn't say it's a long world, it's actually kind of a short one, uh, but it does take a while to get through. And then the world after that, which I intend to also do in this session, uh, probably takes even longer. So we're, we're probably not getting 10 jiggies per episode, which, you know, it's bad for efficiency, but it's good for making the series last a little longer. Because if it was 10 jiggies per episode, this would be like an 11 episode series, which it still might be. Uh, just, you know, you want, it, you want it to be a nice length. Okay, we're going into Clanker's Cavern. I don't want to. I don't want to rush through it. I'm not trying to rush. I'm not trying to speed run. I'm just saying that uh, I'm going through this at what I believe is a reasonable rate. Oh, well, I can get this, but I also don't want to. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go through it too fast that people are disappointed and they're like, "Oh man, it's not." We waited uh, 15 months for this. I don't know how long it's been since uh, Fire Red ended. I just I've said this before. I really just hope that this is not the best part of someone's day because if so, it'll be really disappointing. You guys didn't think I was gonna get that, but I knew. Gold feathers, these will become important at some point. And I really just found out that, like, the sound effects in this game are so much louder than anything else. Uh, while I was editing the first two episodes, I was like, man, the sound of, like, collecting a Jinjo is one of the loudest sound effects I think I've ever heard in a video game. Uh, but that's fine. I might just have to, I don't know, adjust accordingly. Incoming Jinjo. Oh! Hope no one's ears were blown out by that. Uh, so Clanker's Cavern is the second worst world in the game, and it's, it's not hard to see why. Well, not right now, it isn't. Uh, or it is, rather. Uh, the reason it's the second worst world is because it is a water-based world, an amphibious one, if you will. I think that's all the notes in this little starting area. Uh, so the thing that, like, water sucks in, like, basically every single video game, because it's slow and it sucks. Uh, but more specifically, you don't get, like, any abilities in water. Like, this game has some pretty good movement, I think. Uh, but your only movement in water is, like, move the camera and either swim with Kazooie, which is fast, or swim with Banjo, which is slow. A jump scare incoming, by the way. I don't want children to be, uh... Easily frightened. It's, it's Clanker. Actually, like, terrifying frame of the game. Uh, but don't worry, he is not a villainous creature. He is, in fact, friendly. Uh, just gonna get some air real quick. It is some pretty disgusting water right now, but I think it's gonna be fun. I'm not even gonna joke about Flint, Michigan, or Ohio, okay? That's actually, like, tragic. Some of the footage I've seen of the smog cloud over Ohio, and I'm like, man, they sure aren't really doing anything about this, huh? I saw a report that was like, Ohio residents are reporting a, a difficulty breathing and chest problems and pain in the solar plexus region. And I'm like, yeah, they better be like that. feels like a dang nightmare in there. But anyways, this is fine. I don't think you instantly drown when you lose all your air in this game. I, I'm just going to assume that. Uh, there, is, there is air down here. We don't have to like have full air to do this. But we have to find... Oh man. Camera controls and we're in water. It's an absolute nightmare. There's a Jinjo down here, but there's also a little, a, a, a lay fish who will give us some air should we collect his bubbles. There they are. Oop. I'd like another one, please, sir. Another bubble for my troubles. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, what is, like, what is going on with... It, it, this is something I was going to talk about last time, it's kind of irrelevant now. Why is this, like, the second level in every single video game, like, a desert or sand-themed one? Like, Treasure Trove Cove is sand-themed, I think it's the same way in, um... So Rayman Origins is always kind of the first example I think of when I think of desert-based worlds. Hi, I'm Gloop. Hey, hey, hey Gloop. I just... Alright, that unlocked a core memory within me, and I don't quite uh, understand why. Can I tell you something? I've never played League of Legends, but I do have, like... I have rough knowledge of, like, all the champions based off of uh, certain sources, let's say. Anyways, we turn the key three times, and we uh, unshackle Clanker from his sh shackles, I suppose. Dude, nice gold tooth. Clanker is like... Listen, we're going to talk about Clanker in a second. As you can see, he has a bit of a flesh uh, thing going on. I I am shocked that this game is actually like rated E for everyone. It's like... I'll just say this much. It's pretty obvious playing this game that uh, this game and Conker's Bad Fur Day were made by the same company because, man, there's a lot of... Uh, a shocking amount of similarities, let's say. 
Oh, my ears. Mainly the fact that, like, for some reason there's a lot of- there's actually, like, a shocking amount of, like, blood in these games. Uh, in Banjo-Tooie, there was a boss. I think that's all the notes. I hope I didn't miss any. And, okay, I'm going back up. In Banjo-Tooie, there was a boss that when you hit him, uh, like, actual blood comes out of his body, and it's like, wow, they- Sometimes you have to wonder if they, like, played that far to figure that out. It's like, maybe the standards were just easier back then for E for everyone. A silly cartoon bear and a bird, it's like, yeah, that's E for everyone. Don't mind the scene where, like, actual blood is shown, and, like, actual half-swear words are shown on certain boxes in, uh, Grunty Industries. But anyways, it's Bandor kazooie It's just a good idea to talent trot up these things just in case, because, I mean, it's faster and helps you get up steep slopes in case that's what it counts as. But we're collecting some collectibles, collecting some eggs, some feathers, even. Uh, I have, I have good, well, I don't know if this is good news for you, you probably don't care. Which, not, not in, like, a bad way, just in, like, a, I wouldn't care if I were you. I have been officially accepted into the YouTube Partner Program. I'm very... I won't say I'm, like, excited. I don't expect to make, like, any money off YouTube. Like, virtually any. Um, but, like, I don't know. It's kind of neat. When I was reading the terms and conditions... I mean, this is how you know you're getting old. Okay, I've already gone into the first uh, open space I went to before. Uh, let's just get on top of Clanker real quick. I mean, this is how you know you're getting old is when you actually, like, read the terms and conditions. Uh... Which I do. I mean, it, I think YouTube is pretty important to me, so I would like to understand what I'm getting myself into, so to speak. Uh, but, yeah, when I was reading the terms and conditions, one of the stipulations is it's like, we, we, we don't like to monetize people that have, like, excessive negativity in their videos. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> they're gonna look at my videos and be like, all this guy does is complain. But then I got accepted, and I was like, oh, they probably mean more, like, you know, like, bigotry and, like, racism. And I was like, okay, I think I'm pretty clean on that resolve. And listen, all I'm gonna say is that I'm going to stay... I'm gonna stay consistent with my morals, okay? I am not... I have, I have deselected the option for, like, mid-roll ads, right? They're not gonna show up in the middle of the video. Beginning and end of video is fine for me. It, because I like to... You know, I, I like to produce content that I like to watch. And so I like to, uh... Live by my own standards. Which is to say... Uh, I will not be putting ads in the middle of videos. I will not be putting them... I think it's just in the middle of videos. I mean, like I said, beginning and end of videos is pretty whatever. I mean, you, you have to expect that. Uh, and of course, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but there is a free... This is a factual statement. There is a free browser extension called Adblock uh, that uh, you can install for free. If you don't know what it... I, maybe I, I can't recommend it because, you know, it hurts me. Uh, oof, ouch, my ad revenue. Uh, but, you know, just in case you're not quite sure what it is, it is indeed a free browser extension. You can find more about it by searching on Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo, rather. Uh, it's free, it takes maybe a minute to install, and it blocks all sorts of ads. Uh, I'm not endorsing it, I'm just saying that these are facts. You can bulk them indeed. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, it's, um... YouTube. It's cool. I don't, I'm not like... I, I feel like doing YouTube as a job would probably be maybe the most miserable experience ever, because your ad revenue is just, like, random. At any point, YouTube could just say, like, we don't want to monetize your content anymore because of this. Which, like, I understand it on the one hand. Because it's like advertisers, and it's you know, YouTube doesn't really control that sort of thing. If advertisers say like we don't want people who swear excessively, we don't want to put our ads on those videos, like, they don't really have a choice. But at the same time, they could be a little more open with their creators. Uh, it's definitely just like a big corporation bad kind of scenario. These guys are disgusting. Snippet mutants. These guys are like the ancestors of uh, that guy we fought in Treasure Trove Cove, who got destroyed. Yeah, I've learned how to do green screen. I didn't get a chance to do it in Fire Red because it wasn't convenient, but I'm glad. I don't want to, um... I, I'm really scared of, like, over-editing these videos, and that's something I never really want to do. I don't want to, like, force a funny edit or, like, force something. Do the, uh... Excuse me. Uh, DaVinci Resolve has, like, a boring detector, which I, I haven't used it, but I assume it's just like, Hey, it's been three minutes since you put an edit in. Might want to add a funny image or text. And I'm like, no. I just, um... I'll add them at my leisure when I want to. If I, uh, like, if I see the opportunity for it, I will. If I don't see the opportunity, I'm obviously not going to. Nope. But it's, uh, I don't know, it's still, it's nice to be able to make content that I like. I have not sold out, I think. If you feel like I've sold out by playing a game released over 20 years ago that doesn't really have much of a following nowadays, comment below. It's really, like, crunchy audio in this section, but I don't think it's too bad, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's just, like, I, I like to be able to make the content that I like, and I like adding edits, I like kind of challenging myself and being like, I want to do this edit, but I don't know how, so let's just learn how to do it, and then do it. And it's fun, it's rewarding, people like watching it. I'd say this is a nice hobby, even if it's very, very time-consuming. Jiggy acquired. 
Uh, so, you know, I haven't died yet in this game. Am I gonna die in this world? Almost certainly not. Uh, unless I drown getting that jiggy that I just got. But, uh, I'm definitely gonna die, like, several times later on. And I'm not really sure what the protocol for that is going to be. Because I think if you die, I think you have to leave the world with 100 notes for it to count. Uh, we don't get anything by going up here, right? No. Uh, but I think you have to leave the world with 100 notes for it to count. And, um... Some of the later worlds are pretty long, so I'm not looking super forward to that. They don't. Just, just go. Oh, it's fine. He bows up and down. It slowly comes and it goes, just like the summertime. Uh, I've been... Listen, the inevitability... I am inevitable, Persona 4 Golden. The inevitability of Persona 4 is kind of... It's rearing its head at me. Because I'm bored and I'm out of things to do, and I'm like, well... Usually around this time of the year, I would, uh... Replay either Explorers of Sky or Persona 4. And, uh, it's just, it hurts, okay? It hurts to look back and be like, ah. It's like Undertale, you know? When you when you finish the good ending of Undertale, they basically say, like, hey, listen, everyone's happy right now. Which means you don't need to do anything, right? Like, everyone's happy, you've done your job, congratulations. Now don't ever launch the game again. Because then if you reset, people won't be happy anymore. I don't know where the other honeycomb piece is in this world, but I'll just, uh, ignore that for now. Where's another? I need another opening. Oh, we already did that one. That was where the Jiggy was. Uh... Let's go, let's go, let's, yeah, let's, let's go inside Clanker real quick, why don't we? Let's solve his little toothache he mentioned it earlier. Clanker's a good lad, and I want to help him out. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's like that with Persona 4, right? The, the golden ending of Persona 4, spoilers ahead, kind of, is that, like, everyone is happy. And let me just center the camera real quick. There we go. Close enough. Oh, no, the N64 camera. Oh, why does every time I shoot an egg, it goes back? Yep, one of those is gonna hit. Oh, boy. This is... Why... Why does every single time I shoot a nugget... Okay. It's fine. If we just stay here... Nailed it. Oh, what a genius. Now we can do the other side. But yeah, the golden egg of Persona 4 is like, everyone's happy. It's been... It's been a year. Everyone's happy. You're still friends with everyone. Uh, li life in Itaba is nice. Uh, but then it's like, man... Having to, like, willingly go back on that and be like, No, I want... I want to go back into a time where, like, people had toxic friendships and there was, like, an active murder investigation. It just kind of feels weird to me. Do we got another Jiggy for this? No, I don't think so. I think we have to go inside the mouth. Having to willingly, like, go back on that, even though it is New Game Plus, is like, uh, it just feels... feels sad, man. Chie Satanaka, no longer my girlfriend. We haven't even met yet. We're strangers. I gotta work on that again, even though it's really easy. I should get that Mumbo token at some point, just because they, uh... I wouldn't say I'm running low, but the next world after this will have a Mumbo transformation, and that's gonna be, I think, 15 Mumbo tokens, so... Definitely gonna want to, uh, get enough for that at some point. But like I said, once we get late game, uh, we're going to have more than enough mumbo tokens. Uh, the cameras, really. Yeah, so, I, was, I mean, underwater levels is, like, not only do you not have any abilities, but, like, that you don't learn any underwater abilities in this game. You learn some in Tui, but even then, that's not great. You don't learn any in this game, so it's just very, like, restrictive in how you can move. Uh, nice hoop puzzle. Yeah, this is like, I mean, look at how fleshy the interior is. It's so, uh... I wouldn't say I find it gross, I would just say that, um... Did I put a warning on this video? Warning, Banjo-Kazooie inside. Uh... Can I... Yeah, I can do that. It's just, um... I think standards were just kind of different back then. At the, oh, all the, all the sensitive snowflakes. I don't actually believe that, okay? Nobody who says... If someone says sensitive snowflake unironically nowadays, that's how you know that person is to be avoided. Because they don't have any idea what they're talking about. I actually got recommended a video that was like, Family Guy, try not to laugh. Don't get offended, sensitive snowflakes edition. And it was like, oh, it's just... I'm just turning my head away in embarrassment, it's so awful. Uh, so there are like, I think, three or four different, like, entrances to Clanker. And one of them has a new move, and one of them has some other stuff. I don't, I don't remember exactly where everything is in the stage, but we're gonna try and figure it out together. Does that sound good, guys? Alright, let's go. Uh, I don't really like the whole... I don't know, I don't like fake... I'm not, I'm not gonna say fake, because some people just genuinely are excitable like that, and that's something I have to acknowledge. I think there's a Jinjo down here. Uh, and if you go out that way, you just kind of come out of his gills, so not super uh, good for us right now. It's like, I just don't like to... I don't like to play things up, okay? This is the channel, this is what it is. I'm not going to change who I am, or, or how I speak, or how I play for the sake of uh, the audience, right? I don't want to create a phony sense of who I am, I just want to make this content and that, that's it. And the fact that people watch it, I feel very, very fortunate. And I genuinely thank you to the people who watch it, it's very... It's, it's nice, it warms my cold, dead heart. 
very enjoyable. Okay, so uh, we have... And the problem is I haven't a very good track of these little entrances here. I think one of them has a Jinjo. One of them probably has some notes as well. We haven't really gone down to like the, the midway point at the bottom of this area. Uh, there's a Jinjo. This one's going to have a Jiggy, so we gotta slow down. This is number eight. Okay, I think I know where the last two Jiggies are. Uh, I just don't know where... Like, I don't know if my notes are in check, so to speak. Uh, I'll, I'll investigate down at the bottom once we're done with old, old Clanker. Okay. So one of the areas we have to go is that area we were... When, the, we, when he shot the bolt up out of his little blowhole, we have to go inside there when that bolt comes up. Uh, and then I think this is where we learned the new move, maybe? Oddles did say it was well hidden. Also, shout out to the frame rate in this world is, uh, no bueno. Uh, this is not the new move, but it is like one tilde switch and some notes and a jiggy, so... Ooh, what's this? I don't... Uh, I'm disgusted with myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like modern memes. I think that's... Again, it's another good sign that you're getting old, is just, like, modern memes are really just... They're, they're killing me. I see them, and it's like, oh, I don't... I just don't get it, okay? Am I out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. What's a real modern meme? The, the Riz. Someone explained to me that Riz is, uh... Oh, actually, this leads into where I got the move, right? Uh, Riz is just the middle part of Charisma. To Riz someone means to, to, to put the moves on, to put the charm on, so to speak. Uh... And it's like, I don't, I don't know. People just make up words nowadays because the old words get boring, in my opinion. Anyways, how are we going to get past this? Uh, Bottle's going to teach us a sweet move. And this will be our last Jiggy, and then we just need notes. Eco's wings. The yeah, ideal, I like the dialogue in this game. Uh, I just, um, the opening stuff is not so good because it's not important to me. Even this stuff is like, it's just telling me the moves. But, uh, you know, we can become invincible with the power of gold feathers. Five valuable gold feathers. And my energy is a bit low. Uh, so, I thought about... Okay, listen, we've learned all the new moves. It's really exciting. I love that little jingle. Dude, big shout-out to Grant Kirkhope. <laughs> Grant Kirkhope is the composer for these games, and he just, like, goes unbelievably hard on his job. Okay, that's the last Jiggy. It's like... <laughs> I just imagine them saying, like, Okay, Grant, we need, a, we need a sound for when you pick up an object, and it doesn't have to be anything too flashy. And then he just goes, like, insane. He's great. He still does the uh, Mario and Rabbids games, which they got a sequel to. And, uh, I mean, you, you can tell it's Grant Kirkhope just because of the music. It's fantastic, truly.